welcome to the OAPN podcast with your host Adar Sakre. No bullshit, no cuts. 100% raw conversations with 0% fucks to give. We don't encourage the consumption of alcohol, but if you want to open up a cold one while you watch this, it's not a bad idea. Welcome to episode number 34 of On a Personal Note with Adar Sakre. Uh 31 and 32 we covered the whole uh, Livizi story. Uh, 33 of course uh, Bohico and its entire journey was covered and that episode in fact uh, is yet to come out so we're waiting for that to come out and you ought to see on today's episode we have uh, a very special guest again uh, the beauty of it is she comes from the same circle of people uh, that i know and in fact we went to the same college uh, before i introduce or rather before i talk more about her uh, let's say hi to navinita hi <laughs> hi navinita so navinita is uh, a former miss universe india and uh, that title itself way back uh, you know like during college when i got to know that she's part of this pageant and uh, she went on to represent the country on such a big forum i was always very curious about what it takes for a journey like that to unfold and uh, yeah so if you know nanita great here's a chance for you to know that story in detail if you don't know uh, even better because now you get to learn what goes in to make you know titles like this happen for yourself so apart from the title happening we'll also try to try to understand what her personal story is in terms of say her family how did the opportunity come through what support did she have and how did it all unfold so yeah let's get started <laughs> so how is present day life going it's great uh, i think it's been quite a journey mm-hmm. and it's been very enriching i've learned a lot i've mm-hmm. seen a lot of met a lot of people so of course mm-hmm. all of all of the little experiences have all added up mm-hmm. um and life now is very different from how okay. it would have been if okay. i did not win the miss universe india title mm-hmm. um and i'm supremely grateful for everything that i've gone through whether it's the hardships the failures the victories all of it i think has added up to the person that i am today perfect uh when we take that title right the miss universe india title uh when how does it make you feel so i mean once a miss india always a miss india i mm-hmm. think uh, that's something i realized much later on because of course you have that one year the reigning period that you have and uh, and then you feel oh my god there's going to be a new girl and of course there've been a lot of uh, new girls who've come after me as well who've won the title but i guess what you do with your title and the fact that you've been given that platform always stays with you so it's a lifetime experience that you cannot have again and like i said the title itself stays with you for life so for life. Yes. uh because it's a huge title right you're talking about a country all together and then to carry that title i'm sure is a huge responsibility and wherever you go you have to keep that in mind that yeah. this title is now attached to you so anyway let's go back to kind of day number 1 where it all started for you and uh, when was the first day that you decided to even go for this title and yeah how did it all unfold so um i think it was a very subconscious experience because as a kid i grew up um you know watching miss india the pageant with my mom and dad and it was just something that i would watch and then go back to sleep like hundreds of other girls in our country and i think the first step that really changed things for me was when i was in my 11th um is when i took part in the miss bangalore auditions mm-hmm. and that happened because the auditions were happening right outside college and as i said wait you know i was in this whole i just come out of 10th i just come out of school so i was doing my pu i mean in bangalore we call it pu so yeah Um, I was super excited. I said, "I'm going to take part in all the extracurricular activities. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to, you know, and I love the stage. I love the stage and the camera." Mm. So when these auditions happened, I enrolled, and I was actually the first runners-up at the Miss Bangalore auditions. Mm-hmm. And though it was victory in some form, I did feel extremely sad because I wasn't the winner. Uh, but then I didn't lose hope, and what I did was. Um, Mr. Shridhar sir, who's not anymore yeah. now, he's very famous. He's trained uh, Dipka Padukone and Anushka Sharma and a lot of other budding talent from our uh, uh, from our city. So he was the one who who identified the passion that I had for stage, 
and he trained me. He trained me on how to walk, how to pose, how to uh, you know just basically do ramp. And that really helped me. And I took and I I used to finish college and I used to go for these rehearsals every single day. And thanks to him, I started doing a lot of ramp shows and a lot of shoots in the city. And I think that kind of gave me a lot of uh, knowledge and a lot of experience because then I started learning how to do my own hair and makeup. I knew how to walk on stage. I understood what stage presence was. Um, I learned a lot of different things, like how to basically bring your personality. Mm-hmm. Uh, on stage, because as a model, there isn't much that you can do because you aren't speaking. Um, the only thing that you can do is express yourself and the way you look. Mm-hmm. So that really helped. And then one day, I get a call from the Miss India team okay. saying that you know why don't you take part? And, and how the did Miss, they get? Yeah. So what the Miss India team does is they mm-hmm. keep scouting. Mm-hmm. They keep scouting for potential talent. So especially mm-hmm. if you are a model or if you've been. Uh, you know, if you, if you're seen in shoots and pageants and things like that, they do have an eye for people who could be potential, yep. uh, you know, candidates. So they got in touch with me, and you won't believe it. The first time I went for the auditions, I decided not to go for the second round because there was a bikini round. Oh, and I, yeah, <laughs> and I just didn't feel confident. I felt mm. like I wasn't prepared enough, okay. and also because I never worn a bikini. Mm. So um, I decided that no, this is not for me, and I just didn't feel ready. Okay. And then what happened was next year I get a call again uh, from them saying that we would love to have you come and audition. And this time I somehow went to the gym and I felt very prepared. Like whether it was uh, gymming or whether it was knowing how to speak or whether it was walking, the hair, makeup, everything because of experience and work. Um, I felt a lot more confident. And then everything else just fell in place. So. Uh Sridhar sir that you spoke about yes. uh, where did you meet him and uh... so he was basically the choreographer and the grooming expert for the Miss Bangalore pageant okay. back in 2012 or 13 so, so he kind of prepped you yes yes to, so he okay. did see a lot of potential in me mm. and I remember going up to him and asking him how much his fees would be because I knew he had trained people like the Pika okay. and Anushka mm. and uh, he the, the first thing that he told me he was the when you get your first show when you get when you earn your first uh, pay yeah you can come and give me that Okay. And and I was really happy because obviously I was just in school. I hadn't mm. started earning and I would very dedicatedly go to his studio mm. and practice and rehearse every single day. And finally, when I got my first show, um, it wasn't much. It was, I think, 3,500 at that time because mm. I was a new model and you obviously aren't paid as much as the other models. Um, I was given that money and of course, it was very emotional because it's your first pay and you know, you're, you're getting paid for something that you really love doing. And I went up to him and I gave him that and he refused to take it. He said, do bigger and better shows and then I'll probably take it. <laughs> so he was very kind and he was actually the one who really inspired me to work on myself. So you said during school uh, was the time you this saw is, it? This is around 11th. 11th during 11th you said yes. PO, right? right? Okay, okay, okay. So now what's happening at home by the way? Like have they... Uh, have they asked you, okay, like, do you want to do this, like, seriously? Are they uh, encouraging you? What's the conversation going on at home at that point? So, when I was in school, this mm. is back in, I think, when I was pretty young, mm. um, we have this institute called RSI, which uh, okay. which is for Air Force and Army people. It's basically a club. And Lara Dutta had won Miss Universe then. And I and my sister were pretty young that time because there's a picture of Lara's homecoming with my mm. sister on my dad's lap. Wow. And I'm standing next to her. A so small nice. Kid. Mm. And um, I remember going for her homecoming and because mm. her dad's from the Air Force, my dad's from the Air Force as well. Uh, we would watch her sitting in the table next to ours with her family. And this is after she's won Miss Universe. So, you know, little, um, I think, little experiences like that kind of stay at the back of your mind. Mm. And you wouldn't believe it when I got through the Miss India auditions and I was a part of the finale. It was Lara Datta who was brought on board yeah. and she's the one who trained me and she's the one who crowned me as well. Isn't that so, crazy? Yes. So, I mean, that I think subconsciously when you really mm-hmm. wish for something, it does kind of come through together. In terms of uh, your family, uh, do they come from a place of letting you do whatever you want to do? Yeah. Or... Uh, like, did they have any type of restrictions 
in a so my family like has been extremely supportive i okay. think that's the difference between a lot of people who've really achieved things in life when mm. you have a supportive family it makes a huge difference mm. and i know not everyone's lucky to have that but uh thank thanks to god i've always had very supportive uh, mm. parents uh, both my mom and dad have always let me do whatever i wanted to because i also feel like they had that confidence that i would not mm. take wrong decisions and that i knew exactly what i wanted to do so of course the day i won they were thrilled and they were really happy because i mean my dad has friends whose daughter has won miss universe so you know it was oh. something that that mm. was just that was like they couldn't believe i did that as well mm. so they've been extremely supportive uh, they have never in fact my mom uh, though she's a doctor and though i took up science in 11th mm. and 12th never ever told me that i should do a certain thing or shouldn't do a certain thing and i think mm. that really helps you because then you're making decisions without any pressure any and also you're being very um, level headed about what you want to do rather than mm. convincing yourself to do something that you don't want to where did you do pu So I did PU in Jain University, okay. and then I did my graduation at Joseph's. Nice. Uh, I was just getting to this, uh, you know, understand. Like you said, your parents have been damn supportive yes. in the fact that you wanted to pursue it. When you decided to pursue things like this, or say modeling, or pursuing this, uh, you know, title, what about it excited you? Was it? Was it the fame? Uh, was it the money? or uh, yeah you just wanted some recognition or you like to be on stage doing the ramp walk what about it excited you the most that's i think a very interesting question that nobody's mm. asked me before but um i think i took part in miss india during the f- uh, the beginning of the third year of college mm. so i was away from college for the entire year and um since it was a final year of graduation it became very difficult because of course to give your final exams you need to have attendance attendance yes so I that think it was 80 80% 75% yeah, yeah, yeah i think 75 like yeah. when i barely had anything yeah um but uh, that's a different story uh, but coming back to your question um you know there's just certain things that you just are aligned and passionate about and mm. there doesn't have to be a reason like I don't think money was ever the motivator because I started doing shows and I would and do shows regularly so I was earning way before most of my friends were wow um and money was never something that motivated mm-hmm. me even now like there's a lot yeah. of things that I don't do because money is never the motivator um fame again I mean unless you really experience that you don't really know no mm. what you're in for right okay. I think what motivated me was just the fact that I loved being on stage Mm-hmm. and whether it was a college show or whether everything had equal passion like even mm-hmm. if i walked just for a college show even if i was on the miss india stage i think just the joy and the mm-hmm. happiness of being in front of the camera and stage is i think what made it and and in school were you also part of a lot of stage events say a dramatics or a dance team so yes i okay. was um mm-hmm. i mean i do remember here and there like in third standard i did mm-hmm. did do some stuff and mm-hmm. um then i was the captain in i think 10 standard so yeah i did but i feel like it was in 11th and 12th when i really mm-hmm. took in the effort to appear for things like they say mm-hmm. right you need to show up yeah and only when you show up is when things work when for you when things work for you so yes i i'd say those school did help me a lot like i did take part in a lot of stuff like elocution and debate which i think all adds up to you being able to speak and communicate um but i think it was in 11th and 12th when i really took up opportunities so for a uh, you know for a person who's on stage and especially uh, for this title i feel like looks do obviously right like looks are a huge part of all this now for someone who's won a title mm-hmm. i really want to know the truth of this question mm-hmm. are there insecurities see now you told me you went for this bikini round and you said shit dude like i can't do this yeah. i need to go back build my confidence and come back yeah. great like you passed one stage of maybe if i may call it an insecurity i don't know if yeah, well, right. is it an insecurity can i call it an insecurity at that at that time yeah of course okay right. so uh, going forward then were there insecurities <laughs> as navinita and what did you do about it because you know what i feel when people make it to these titles 
there are girls who will be looking at you and say no she might have no insecurities i have a lot right. of insecurities about myself and i feel like that's a problem because everyone who's on the journey think that the people who have made it had no insecurities had everything given to them and they just sailed through it while right. i have a lot of issues i have a lot of insecurities so yeah i just want to get uh your thoughts on something like that and how was it for you so i think there's a huge difference between self esteem and confidence confidence is basically what you portray to the world and self esteem is what you believe about yourself so um i might have been insecure about certain things um but my self esteem was very strong uh because i've grown up with my mom always teaching us to appreciate our skin tone or always loving ourselves for the way we are and that that instilled in us from such a young age really helped me when i got onto the world stage and when i was competing with 88 different countries and of course i was in the tallest i was just 5 7 okay. and you have girls who are 6 feet and 5 9 and then oh, we're shit. all wearing 6 inches of heels so um i mean if you want to feel insecure there are a billion things that you can find uh, to be insecure mm-hmm. but then i realized everybody has insecurities mm. you could appear the most beautiful person to somebody and still have insecurities because that is connected to your self esteem mm. and um for me guess like uh, i haven't really shared this with many people but like i remember during my time having stretch marks was mm-hmm. a huge insecurity not for me but i remember a lot of people mentioning it um like even I, like I would put on a lot of makeup just so that it does not show not because I had an issue with it but because I had so many comments and people you know pointing it out and talking about it uh, but then today I just realized I was like that is me and I think it is only when you accept yourself and you are unapologetically yourself is when you can really prove to others that it's okay to be yourself as well and um the the funny part about this whole experience was the miss universe organization ever asked me to cover up those stretch, stretch marks. marks oh neither did anyone say that oh your points would be cut if you have stretch marks it's the people around you it's the people who are watching you it's the people who are sitting in the comfort of their homes pointing fingers and at that time obviously when you're a part of the competition um you just want everything to be perfect and peer pressure does get to you but today when i look back i'm like stretch marks is as as much a part of me as any other yeah. other personality yeah, yeah. that i have or any other yeah. um you know look that i have yeah, yeah. so so there are things that as you mature you learn mm. but yeah there were a lot of insecurities but i think my self worth and self confidence was so intact that it didn't really bother me what about the girls from other countries right like n- n- like you said it was the people around who were defining oh you know what this okay you can't have stretch marks so you can't have this which means that is their definition of right. perfection and that's how they're judging themselves as well what about the other girls you met these 88 other people that you met uh were their cultures different did they also have insecurities uh is it were you all experiencing the same thing or were you all experiencing different things because you came from different cultures that's that's a brilliant question so this is something that i learned during the miss universe pageant okay. so we would all sit together for breakfast and mm. lunch and dinner and obviously you don't have a fixed group of people that you will sit with so you're interacting with different countries mm. and uh, there are a lot of times when we land up talking about relationships or some of the girls would talk about how they've left their boyfriends and they here for about a month for the pageant or they'd speak about their parents mm. they'd speak about their upbringing and then i realized i was like it is different countries but at the end of the day our emotions are all the same and the same insecurities are mm. are there with all the girls they are all going through the same thing so they might have been brought up in different ways they might have different um you know ways of looking at things but at the end of the day emotions are true to each one and it's universal and and it kind of brings everybody together mm. so that's when i realized as like we might be miles and kilometers apart from each other and we've been brought up in such different experiences but at the end of the day i think that's what gets humans together it's because when we feel something we all feel it the same the same way yes. beautiful no so uh, yeah so great i want to now jump into that actual experience of the miss universe uh, competition uh, how did that unfold uh, yeah and a glimpse like when you got there what did you feel was it as expected 
or was it different so i'll share something of before i went for miss universe okay. so the day i won miss india okay i think more than the crown for mm-hmm. me the victory was the other participants who were competing with me um the format in my year was different so every episode a girl would be eliminated mm-hmm. and lara of course would be the judge with new judges every episode and finally there was seven of us in the finale so we started off with about 15 to 20 girls and then there were seven girls so apart from the seven girls in the finale stage all the other eliminated girls were in part of the audience and when i won mm. um when i look back at the videos i have some friends about five or four of them who were so happy that i won and for me that was my victory i was like people that i've competed with couldn't have been more happier that i won so there's this whole uh process that they have where they mm. ask each contestant who you think is the most deserving person because contestants are the ones who've seen you inside out mm. right and the miss india organization is very particular about the kind of personality that you have mm. so you might be gorgeous on stage mm. and you might uh, have a lot of potential but if you're not a good human being or if you're difficult to work with they take that into consideration they take your entire personality into consideration which a lot of girls don't know about mm. So um I remember the organization coming up to me and saying that most of the girls wanted you to win and oh. even the internal team that does score you apart from the finale judges um even they wanted me to win and I felt that was way more uh, emotional and more of a victory for me than the crown than the crown yes so that that was a great start the fact that I made some really good friends mm. and then when I arrived at Miss Universe mm, just before I arrived I met Lara Datta mm. and there was something that she shared with me that stayed with me even today okay and what she said is remember one thing when you go for this competition you're going to have 88 different girls from 88 different countries mm. do realize that they're winners in their country so you're getting the best from each country they're all going to speak well they're all going to have washboard abs they're all <laughs> going to have <laughs> they're all going to have the longest eyelashes and the neatest of hairstyles they're all going to be able to speak well and appear great mm. and she's like if the organization needs to make one person win please remember that it does not only have to do with you and how you perform there's a lot more to it and at that time i didn't realize but then when i went through the entire experience i realized as an organization and to choose one winner there are a lot of different aspects that you look into you look okay. into things like what will that country give in return how much media exposure would the country give the organization what is the hype about pageants in that particular country in that year what is going on there's a lot that is and rightfully so as an organization when you're making a girl win and you're taking care of her for a year and you know you're giving her brand endorsements and you're basically you know building her career you will also need to see what that country can give you in return so that kind of put things in perspective and i didn't mm. take my win or my failure that emotionally because i realized it's just you can do your best and that's about it the rest the rest is yeah what is meant to be will be yeah. will be right so when you won miss india okay obviously you went on there wanting to win yeah. there's no when you got there and then when these realizations started coming through that okay it's not just about me right and there's so many other things at stake right but even then there's this deep desire to make it right, right. obviously if you right. don't have that you wouldn't be standing there and then i think you won another title if i'm not wrong at that Uh, pay, uh, uh the national costume i made it to the top 5 yeah, right you made it to the top 5 yes. yeah I, i remember that now yeah i really want to know though the maturity is there and you understand this is for a bigger cause when it doesn't happen when there is someone else who takes the lead mm-hmm. what did you feel on stage at that point so what had happened was Uh, this has kind of taught me how not everything is under your control okay and you can be the most perfect person but if mm-hmm. things aren't aligned you should just concentrate on what you can do and let go of the rest so the best example of that was my journey when i did my prelim so we have a prelim and then we have the finale and the prelim is also telecasted and in the prelims the my hair makeup the way i performed everything and i got scored extremely high and i know that i performed really well but then unfortunately just before the finale just before i was stepping on to mm. the stage 
um i had my periods that started okay. and i was in terrible cramps and i was no, in pain i was literally God. on the floor crying mm. and also because i'd gotten selected for the top 5 of the national costume my national costume was kg is heavy like i don't even remember i think it was about 43 kg what yeah so it's it was in different parts um and then of course the whole thing was really heavy but then when you uh, assemble it and all of that stuff it gets a little lighter it was an extremely heavy national costume and the hair and makeup for it had to be very uh, very dramatic because obviously it was part of a goddess and mm. you know your hair and makeup needs to match up to the big huge national costume that you're wearing um and they asked me just before the finale they asked me they were like since you're in the top 5 would you be okay wearing it on the finale stage for the live audience and i agreed to it after i wore it i didn't realize that i would have no time to change my hair and makeup so with the wrong hair and makeup i've gone on to the finale stage to do my final walk and that of course oh my, my points God. were cut because of the energy levels being low and you know the presentation not being at yeah. par with what it should be because your hair and makeup didn't go with your attire with the rest of it and i mean honestly oh, at a pageant stage appearance and as well as the way you speak but to come to the part of you mm. answering questions and being able to speak is in the next round mm. so when you lose a lot of points in the first round um, you obviously don't make it to the yeah. second so though i did make it to the top 15 um these were little things that i realized that you, is just not in your control so who i mean it's a wrong question to ask i guess but i really want to ask it whose fault is it then i mean it really i mean i don't want to take names right. but i want to know where where it went wrong then or what could have been done to avoid it um i think I I don't think there was anything that could be done because okay. the format that they created was something mm. new for them as well. Um and that's why they asked me they asked me if I'm okay wearing oh. the national costume. Of mm. course they're not aware that I will have to change my hair and makeup. Right. So mm. and I wasn't aware that I'd be given no time at all. So Yeah, that was the loophole there. Yes. But which a lot of people don't understand. So when they see a finale, mm. it's very easy for people online to just message things like, "Oh, she was good in prelims, but then what happened? Mm. Oh, she didn't make it because she didn't do well." But there's so much more happening backstage. Mm. But one thing I do have to mention is during my entire Miss India and Miss Universe experience, the amount of support and love that I've gotten online. I don't think any other candidate has ever. Because I remember mm. that was the year when uh, Miss India kind of. took an effort to come online and to really like you know become more social media be more live in social be more media. live on social yeah. media yeah yeah so though in my time we didn't have stories instagram wasn't that active mm. uh, but yes i remember having so many followers and so mm. many people who really genuinely wanted me to win so mm. i would have uh, followers online who would send me Okay, do this makeup today, or why don't you wear this gown? They would message the Miss India organization, threatening them that oh, if Nainita doesn't win, mm. then we're going to stop following this pageant forever oh, and things shit. like that. So I did have a lot of support as well. That's crazy, and I think those things happen when you're just genuine, right? When nothing right. that you're trying to do is made up. for right. the platform and it's just you being you exactly because you're not asking for it right it's coming to you right, right? so i think uh, that's definitely beautiful yeah and i just want to ask you this like you said right like what happened was meant to be and if you're not aligned at that moment whatever is uh, you know had to happen had to happen what is your take on things like destiny right when we speak mm-hmm. about something like destiny uh do you believe that things are already planned for you or do you believe you make it there or is it a mix so this was a journey that took me a while to realize but again mm. i don't like speaking about it because i feel each one comes to their own conclusion yeah, depending yeah. on the experience sure, sure. but asking my personal opinion i have always been of the opinion that you make your destiny if you really want something you go out there and you get it mm-hmm. and if you don't get it it's only because you aren't working hard enough and it's not and it's because you don't really want it but eventually i learned that there are so many people out there doing the best that they can in their capacity and wanting certain things as much as anybody else and still not having them or not being able to achieve it and then that kind of put things in perspective and i realized that putting that kind of pressure on yourself telling yourself that if you're not getting what you want it's because of you is unfair 
because there are times where things will not go exactly the way you want them to and if you're not mature enough to understand that um it can get a little mentally exhausting for yourself so now what i've come to uh, understand of life is that you do what is in your control and you can i mean we can all always do better yeah. uh, but don't be hard on yourself everyone yeah. does the best that they know and have the capability to do at that time uh, and then you just let things be and and i've also realized from all my past experiences that eventually whatever happens happens for a reason and for the best way i mean you get what you're ready for yeah so yeah because there are certain things now say someone has kept this goal right like you're saying my goal is to become miss universe irrespective of what it is i need to get there yeah. and then it doesn't happen now if you sit and really like fret over that maybe you'll never get out of that in fact it'll start getting toxic for you exactly maybe now say for example there's a person who wants to join the indian cricket team mm-hmm. and he's practicing right day in and day out he's practicing and he's trying his slot at the indian cricket team but it's not happening right. and people with him are just getting ahead and he's not getting the opportunity but maybe that's what's written for you you this shouldn't work and then the next thing you consider is what was written for you because you are just made that way exactly because every energy that you have every thought that you have is made for some other platform and it wasn't this it was you who was thinking you were made for this but and you know strangely there are times mm-hmm. when we're not self aware mm-hmm. is when we don't even realize that what we are after is probably something we don't really want so i'll give you a great mm-hmm. personal example sure after you win miss india of course you're expected to become an actor right yeah. like the organization oh expects my. that yeah. the the rest of the society is like oh my god we have ishwarya we have priyanka i mean you aren't a miss india if you haven't become i mean and we we know so many miss indias that in fact even i'm not aware of mm. who because didn't become actors we don't know them really? now the now the problem with our country i feel is that there's so much of focus and intense attention given to cricketers and bollywood stars that we don't really understand that every career has its own space and 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 a miss india can want to be other things so i got into that rat race as well because as soon as i won miss india i was like oh my god uh, i have to become an actor mm. and then i looked back and i thought do i have the talent am i even interested mm. Mm. not all of us see i understand fame and and being up there and being idolized is is wonderful but not everybody wants to be an actor yeah and uh, that i think was very hard for people to understand because they were like oh so now are you are you doing any Uh, movies, movies and are you auditioning for things and of course since you have a five year contract with the miss india organization you need to do things that they ask you to oh, do oh yeah it's a five year contract yes what, the winner winner so has a what does the contract say so i, I mean just overview of uh, <laughs> what is you know what's expected so what's I'll, the roadmap I'll, they I'll draw for you i leave that for the girls to win and discover oh. because <laughs> if i disclose it then probably there okay, isn't okay. much to <laughs> sure 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 great uh, uh, explore mm. but uh, i mean you do have a five year contract mm. where you're tied with the with the miss india organization and for me it was it was great mm. because i'm someone who is new to bombay i was not an aggressive person who was out there to get work for myself i was not somebody who intended to get into movies mm. so when it came to networking or auditioning these were things that i didn't want to do but i convinced myself that that was the next thing to do otherwise i wouldn't be successful mm. and in that period of time where i was convincing myself to go for auditions or convincing myself to network i wasn't happy because that is not what i was aligned to do and that and i honestly feel being an actor needs so much of passion talent and dedication which none of it i had because it was in my interest so that was a difficult period for me where you are expected to do something to appear successful but that isn't aligning with yourself so like you mentioned um sometimes we just run behind a goal not realizing that that's probably not something we want to do So yeah. it it needs a lot of self awareness to really sit and ask yourself that if something that you're running behind is not working out it's probably because you don't really want it that much. I think you've brought up a very nice topic and I want to be very uh, transparent about this right. Uh when you won the title and a few years after as well I've had friends mm-hmm. 
at some point where your name has come up right mm-hmm. because yeah because it's you and the whole journey at some in some conversation the name would come right. up and then the question do actually what did she end up doing after exactly. that right exactly. and i'm being very transparent about this and trust me those questions came from the place of how come she's not in a movie yet right right do i mean do we even realize how narrow mm-hmm. the thought process is right why like you said why not ask the question she won the title let's ask her what she wants to do with that title exactly the title doesn't mean actress yeah. right yeah. so while you were facing this mm-hmm. then what happened how did you decide to so there get out was of that? there was a period during my uh, contract where of course i did go for the auditions mm-hmm. i did land a few offers Mm. um i did do a lot of theater theater was something that i enjoyed because i mm. felt theater was a place where you had to be real right you did have a script but it's that one opportunity that you get to perform in front of the audiences and that's it yeah there's nobody uh, you know judging you and and xyz it is what you do and i felt theater was very real Mm-hmm. um so i did learn a lot but eventually i had my own friends ask me mm-hmm. uh, oh so wh- are you getting into movies or when when is the next movie coming in and in fact there was this one movie offer that i got where okay. the directors were very insistent on having me because i fit the role perfectly sweet and i remember my parents being extremely supportive and saying that why don't you give it a try because only when people even if it's not a Uh, you know, a list or blockbuster. You never know. Just putting your mm. talent out there might just give you a lot more opportunity. Got it. And I never took it up. I never took it up because I knew I did not have the passion or the talent, to be honest, to be in front of a screen and to take up a role that I guess another well-deserving actual actor should be getting. Mm. So, uh, and that was hard because you know there were a lot of times when I would look back and think that oh, I should have done that role, and that would have probably. Oh, everybody mm. starts somewhere, right? Uh, but I'm glad I didn't because it it wasn't making me feel happy. Like going wow. for those auditions didn't make me feel happy. Trying to network with people and trying to push myself into something that I wasn't okay doing, and I'm glad I didn't. I'm glad I didn't pursue it. That's huge. That's like that's something else, and uh, th- you know that's what I'm saying, right? Now, obviously. as time goes on people will obviously leave it right okay you right. you do what you need to right and i think that gets us to a good slot now to understand that yeah where did it go from there now you're in mumbai you're doing all these brand endorsements so you're into modeling and obviously like you said the money was always there because you were always part of right. shows so where did noenita go after that and then yeah we can also step into the new project Right. That has come up, and let's take it. So, um, I realized where my passion and happiness uh lay was in the fact that when young girls who also wanted to get into pageants would come to me. So initially, I started off training them for pageantry, uh, which of course was easy because I would teach them how to walk. And having won so many titles for best ramp walk and and things like that, it was very easy. And having actually been there, there are very few. Uh, I mean, in fact, there's nobody out in the business who's actually been at Miss Universe and is now training girls. Every pageant academy that you go to um, does have a lot of uh, well, uh, good trainers. but nobody has actually been on the real stage they don't understand the mental pressure they don't understand what it really takes once you're there mm. they might they might prepare you to get there but then what so i realized i had that edge and i really wanted to get that out there for the other girls because mm. i remember coming back from miss universe and telling the miss india organization that Yes, I did get the best of trainers. Mm. Um, I had someone from France who taught me how to do hair and makeup, and they did put in all the effort. But I was like, nobody in that team knew what will happen once I reach there, and that's the training that you really need. So that's how the whole confidence code bit started. So these are workshops that I do for girls to help them get into pageants. Mm. But then I realized. Then why should it only be for models and girls who want to become Miss India's? Yeah. It should be for any woman who wants to feel confident in herself. And I think this was the first batch that I had taken, and none of them made it through to the Miss India uh, auditions. But today, one of the girls is representing India at Miss Earth. Another wow. girl is doing fabulously well at shoots, and she's been uh, picked up with an agency now. Uh, you have another girl who started her own dance school. 
and that's when i realized that having girls feel good about themselves and having a good self image as well as self esteem and confidence can actually open your doors to anything that you want mm. and um in fact just recently i trained a girl who uh, was a bit on the heavier side mm-hmm. and she really really worked hard to lose weight okay and i kept telling her throughout the journey as like i would never ask you to lose weight but yes there are certain requirements yeah. like every other job that has certain requirements and she worked hard and she didn't make it through but today she signed up with a really big modeling agency so i just want girls to realize that feeling good about yourself having a good appearance being able to confidently express and speak can actually open so many doors for you so right now that's what my focus is uh as when most of my time either doing one on one um uh you know sessions with girls or having like group sessions and now i'm also going to start something in bombay as well uh, because all of this has been mostly in bangalore and thanks to the pandemic i took it online and i realized like i have girls from bihar i have girls from kerala I have, i'm actually able to reach out so it's to now so online as well yes, sessions okay yes mm-hmm. yes so a lot of girls can't really come to bangalore bombay and i don't want to restrict it just for the girls who can afford to do that so of course online and going um, online has really helped me reach out to more girls in smaller mm-hmm. cities so the whole idea of this is to reach out to girls and make them realize that feeling good about yourself can really change things perfect i think now when you look at that decision that you made of starting something like confidence code mm mm-hmm. and then you compare that with the life of say taking up that role in that movie and taking it up and maybe you would have maybe your circle would have appreciated it more or they would have been more happier that they know right. you know this uh a top a class actress or whatever that is but what would that have given you versus what are these stories making you feel by you're changing these girls lives right mm-hmm. while you told me about what is the objective with confidence code Uh, how are you actually ensuring that journey happens for them like what are the tools in place what are the one or two things you do to enable them to be like that right so um in fact i didn't realize this about my workshops until i heard my sister mention it to somebody okay. she said that though these are workshops the things that set my workshops apart is that it's a very personal workshop so i get down to why a person feels underconfident about mm-hmm. certain things why what their weaknesses and their strengths are and i kind of customize it to each person's experience mm-hmm. and their ability and capacity to learn so that makes a huge difference you know because i can have a curriculum which says okay this is x y z that you need to do to appear confident but if the if the root cause of you not feeling good about yourself is not understood and is, is if you don't find the solution for it you're always going to fall back and i might give you okay sit straight look into a person's eye and speak these are outwardly mm. things that you can do to appear confident but my idea of my workshops is to make a girl feel great about herself mm. and that whole in you know work uh, is what i focus on so wow. it's it's a very personal thing i look at each client i look at each girl i understand where she comes from what her experiences are like i get a lot of girls who are not very fluent with english and i tell them i'm like there is no textbook out there which says it a miss india should be fluent with english right yeah. you can speak your mother tongue your you mother can tongue. speak whatever you want as long as you're able to express yourself Mm. so that is extremely important so just very little things that are very personalized uh, to each girl and her requirement is what i look at in my workshops so as this builds up as an organization confidence code uh now how long has it been since you have started this uh, so it's been on and off i've mm. done it for about a month for a few batches mm. and then completely gone off because i was busy with other things right. um then i've kind of during the pandemic taken one on one sessions mm. which takes a lot of time and effort yeah. like it emotionally drains you out as well so then it's just been a few girls that i've taken up and mm. now in bombay i'm planning to set up a proper academy where you know girls can walk in and do and Yeah. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Like now when we set up a academy of this sort and then there's more attention coming towards it and it's actually helping change lives of many girls. Uh Nanita can't be the only point of contact. Right. Everyone right. cannot come to Nanita because 
you have only so much amount of time right then what happens so that's a great question so mm. until now i've gotten a lot of joy and satisfaction because i've been interacting one on one with these girls mm. Uh, but like you said, as we grow bigger, there won't be time for me to kind of address each person, and I do really wish to set up a team that that has as much dedication as I do. Uh, but all of those things are things that I'm working on. Mm. So it's a slow process, but also it's a very personal thing that yeah. I, that I wanted to continue having the personal touch and not just become any other grooming pageant where hundreds of girls are enrolling, and you know it's it just becomes a thing of okay, I. I I've been trained at this workshop, and and now I'm going for Miss India. I want to make a change in girls' lives that stays with them throughout. Mm. It's beautiful because someone else might be sitting across this table right now and saying, "In the next three years, I want to be able to train three thousand girls," and then that suddenly becomes like a commercial thing. And right. maybe your goal is, you know, making it a commercial process right. than actually changing lives. And it's amazing that you want to stick to it. So that brings me to a very nice point. What's what's a day to day right now? Like you do a lot of travel. Mm-hmm. Um, most of these travel, I also uh, your stories seem to be. Uh, if I'm not wrong, you like to spend a lot of time by yourself as well. Yeah. Like uh, you'll suddenly have these self reflecting thoughts that you'll post on yeah. it. <laughs> you'll be like in an extremely serene place. Mm-hmm. Uh, so is this part of your schedule? Do you like? a lot of time on self reflection and going to these silent places how does your day to day look right now yeah um so i think another uh, advantage of working for yourself is also mm. being able to be flexible mm. um and I, i think that's what it allows me it allows me to travel it allows me to self reflect i'm very very interested in psychology so mm. in fact just before my bombay shift shift happened i'd actually enrolled for my masters in psychology because oh. my end goal in life is to become a counselor uh, my mom's a doctor and a counselor and i've seen her really help people with mental health and i think for me prime focus is mental health and having confidence code workshops i just felt like being someone who's certified and trained to kind of impart a bit of mental health knowledge would be great um so that's something that i started of course now it's it's put on a hold because mm. there's a lot of other stuff happening and i also feel like mental health should always be handled by a trained professional yeah. so if if not me then i'll probably get somebody on board uh, if that takes time uh but yes mental health is something so i spend a lot of time reading books traveling self reflecting yeah. um and i think improving yourself constantly is the best thing you can do for yourself so yes uh I think about uh, a few months ago, I think six to eight months ago, you put up a story where you asked people, saying, uh, "Would you like it if I made self-help videos?" Right. Right. You remember right. this, <laughs> and I remember this so well. And I'm like, "Yeah, it would be great." Yeah. And I think you should really like, yes. you know. <laughs> I think people are gonna love it because right. even with a very small post like i see a lot of people supporting you in the comments and ready to get a conversation going at right, least right right like do you have like do you i do you have that like plan in place to so i think i think one thing that i really okay. need to work on is mm. my procrastination and mm. i i think more than procrastination is i overthink things mm. so even though i have like a lot of plans to put out content to help people i kind of criticize myself a lot and then i take a step back so that's mm. something i need to work on but yes i've i've been thinking and trying to put things in place to put out more content to just yeah. help people and the fact that i do have a certain amount of followers who are interested yeah. in something like this like i have a close friends who kind of okay. mention stuff they say that mm. see there's enough quotes and there's mm. enough help out there mm. right but then somebody that you're following when when something very specific that you read during the day and it helps you um it makes a huge difference i've had friends who have said that the stuff that you post about psychology or mental health somewhere just out of the blue really helps them throughout the day yeah and i know i think just sticking to that and probably i think that's a note i need to make for yeah, myself yeah <laughs> like i'm like dude your profile needs like proper self help right. content which obviously you can say straight up that you know i maybe i will you'll eventually get certified in whatever your plans are but right. i don't think they'll mind getting advice from you like on a day to day basis yes i think that's the first thing we're going to do after <laughs> leaving <laughs> this place uh yeah i just wanted to 
kind of dive in uh, another thing like now that you're in mumbai uh, how's the life there and do you miss life back in bangalore i see you coming down here a lot yes. but how's the life there and how have you gotten adjusted so i that? absolutely love bombay okay. um bombay is a very safe city especially for a single girl so i see a huge difference in the auto drivers like i've always had issues with auto okay. drivers in bangalore and and major issues like i've always landed up fighting with taxi drivers auto drivers and and as as, as hard as they work um with bombay i have never had that issue like i've had auto drivers and cab drivers wait for me at four in the night until i get into the gate which i can't even expect here because here i mean without getting into details i've always landed up fighting with people and just the fact that people in bombay know what struggle is and everyone's grounded you might find the richest of people in bombay and maybe the most poor struggling people but everybody kind of has a level that they understand mm. that the city brings everyone together mm. because um i don't know that city is magic like when you actually settle there and when the city accepts you it's very hard to live anywhere else mm. so n- the whole two years during the pandemic when i was in bangalore i never thought i'd shift back to bombay uh, because i realized modeling can be done from any part of the city and then there was this whole opportunity that came by and in in a week i'd found a place and i shifted back mm. and i i don't know there's just there's just magic in that city i just really like it so does bombay have you now permanently or what um, is it so family is back here okay. um so so i mean in the future i don't know i'd mm. love to settle in bombay mm. uh, but thankfully bombay and bangalore is so close by so mm-hmm. the difference really doesn't matter but as of now yes i'm in bombay you're in bombay and when you you know the whole this mumbai scene on one side and then your whole journey of Uh, mingling with people from the industry what are those you know one or two say celebrities if i may call them that you were like damn i'm glad i met them so i've always loved shahrukh khan and okay. um, even now there's just there's an aura about him and i've met him i think in two occasions mm-hmm. and he's just amazing he just needs to walk into the room and you can't ignore him like even if he's not spoken a word and even if you haven't realized he's walking into the room you know okay so uh, there's just something about shahrukh khan of course i've met a lot of other celebrities as well and um, i mean a lot of common friends and things like that and then you realize i mean celebrities are as human as everybody else mm-hmm. and they have their own set of issues and their own set of insecurities and their own set of struggles like we mm-hmm. think celebrities have it very easy but the kind of competition that's mm-hmm. even within their industry is unimaginable mm-hmm. um so yeah i think sharuk is one person mm-hmm. that uh, that's, so that's now, kind of are you normal around such personalities because if one of us meet a personality like mm-hmm. that i think our mind will like blast beyond our control yeah. so is navanita very normal yeah amongst, so so yeah. actually the introduction to that whole life is girl even now like how does it work maybe with sharuk but with nobody else okay. so the thing is uh, the introduction to the industry was so uh, subtle and mm. seamless because i remember even during the miss india finale mm. we had a one on one with akshay kumar in xyz yeah, yeah. because mm. they were the judges mm. and um, you know so we had to sit across them like this and mm. they would interview us and then they would score wow, us wow wow so uh, i mean and also in the past having done so many ramp shows and you know you have celebrities walking as uh, uh, show stoppers and things like that so the the whole excitement has never been there but i mm. guess for sharuk it's it's a little different yeah it's a little <laughs> different yeah so am i right to say that you've had a very large number of experiences by now right very yes. vast yes uh, nature of experiences at least which maybe not everyone has as early maybe over a lifetime yes yeah. uh, a lot of it happened to you very quick as well because of the uh, title it has right it has to happen at this age right. it happens all of that So after all this now what is Nonita looking at like when generally when you look at life when you look at aspirations when you look at achievements uh what is it like uh is there stress on you is there pressure to get to certain places uh, do you still feel incomplete or are you very sorted where are you right now in terms of a mental space of that 
Um, in terms of that, I think my only focus right now is, especially after seeing fame, having seen everything uh, mm. in moderation, um, and also the pandemic has made a lot of us feel very lost for a certain time of uh, period of time, and then all of us have gone through our different mm. journeys. Um, right now, my only focus is, I think, health mm. and just being happy. I know, as mm. cliche as it yeah. sounds, of uh, and and I and I don't think happiness is like a destination that you constantly need to work on, but anything that I pick up or anything that I do, the end goal is just to be content. Mm. Um, and yeah, that's just the focus. So I don't really have goals like okay, this is what I need to achieve, mm. or this is how much I need to make. Um, I think that way my entire family has mm. been very about experiences rather than achieving things. Mm. And yeah, so the focus is just that. It's just to really enjoy life mm. and not really have the pressure, put the pressure on myself to... Uh, because, you know, I feel sometimes when you don't have fixed goals, there's so many things that come in your yeah. way that you can, you know, take up. Take up. So, I mean, yeah. you're not so rigid. Your sister has been very, uh, you know, side by side in your whole journey. Yes, yes. And I feel like you've also... Uh, exposed her to a lot of what you have felt mm -hmm. uh, in terms of taking her to certain places and in the pictures I have seen I mean right. I don't know anything more than that but I just feel like you have helped her understand maybe a part of your life mm -hmm. uh, like is she also pursuing a similar so journey the funny, the funny part is uh, though I have had all the experiences she is the more mature experienced what? one yeah so okay. she is the one telling me that listen this is what you should do and I think this is you don't need to overreact this way and I think you need to calm down and I think that's how the business is to just move on mm. so she's very she's she's way mature beyond her years and mm. um, in fact she has kind of shared so many experiences with mm. me that has actually helped me so mm. I feel uh, maturity has nothing to do with age it really is about how good your mind can you know really mm. deal with situations so that way my sister and my mom have been great uh, support throughout mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah nice it'll be uh, you know it'll be nice to see what she does with her journey as so, well so surprisingly she's never been interested in modeling okay. Um, she's been very focused with what mm -hmm. she likes doing. So yeah, she's never taken up. Though she, I feel she's the prettier one, and she should have. But yeah, as what? of now, yeah. I do really believe your sister is prettier than you. I what, do. I do. Does she agree or disagree? <laughs> I'm sure she agrees, but then, <laughs> yeah. So, nice. like, whenever we go out, a lot of mm. people say that, oh my God, you'll look alike. Okay. And in a, jo in a joking way, my sister's like, please, that's not a compliment. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. She's <laughs> yeah, roasting so sister, you. Yeah, so my sister and I have this very sarcastic humor that okay. we'll keep going. And, uh, yeah, and that's what I love about my mom and my mm. sister. In fact, my dad as well. Mm. We, ju we just have like really good humor at home. And sometimes it can get a little dark for other people. So like when me and my sister are <laughs> roasting each other, other people don't get it. But oh, uh, but yeah, that makes life more interesting, I feel. Mm. Yeah, your dad must be very happy with how things turned out for because you. He's extremely supportive. I mean, mm. usually you expect dads to have certain expectations mm. or to have certain, like, they limit you in certain ways. Uh, but my dad's been extremely supportive. Wow. Uh, you know, I feel like, uh, I sit here, right? Like, I, I listen to so many different stories. And sometimes, maybe once in about four or five episodes, and I listen to a story like yours where, there is an ecosystem in place and you know like your parents have supported you you've got good education and there were certain things that felt right for you to pursue mm -hmm. whatever you're pursuing and I feel a lot of that happens when you are placed like for a bigger cause right. because if those things didn't happen to you mm -hmm. you won't be able to enable everything everyone else that you want to enable exactly. like for something like confidence code the person behind confidence code has to have zero pressure. Right. The person behind confidence code needs to be the strongest girl you know or else that cannot exist. Right. So I feel like it's amazing that you have started that and uh, the next time when you're here, I think we'll have a lot more to talk about yes. how things have panned out for confidence code right. and I just wish you all the best. Uh, for that Thank right you. and maybe one final message to you know whoever has listened to this and whoever has supported you over the years like you can just give them like the 
sweet message to end this episode um, i think one message that i'd like to give is for the people who follow me and who have continued to support me throughout my journey it means a lot um i think having a good support system apart from your family is is enormous it it really adds up to everything that i have done until now and another message i want to give out to uh, every girl out there is that you need to realize the power lies within you and to really get hold of that power and to activate it you need to feel great about yourself you need to be confident and your self your self image your self esteem has to be at par with the confidence that you radiate and um that's what confidence code is about it's not just for pageants it's for every girl out there to realize her power and to realize her potential and to just understand that there's absolutely nothing that you can't achieve there's so many girls who come to me and say that they don't have support from their family or they're financially not uh you know able to achieve their dreams but my whole idea is that's what confidence code is about it's not for the external support but the support that you can give yourself and just feeling great and feeling confident is all that you really need to achieve anything in your life wow that was a very sweet message so for everyone who's watched till here thank you so much and uh, one of the things i tell at the end of every episode is you know we want you back here we do not want navinita to only come here once right. we want you to come and document your journey here right that's our goal where we get you in once a year mm -hmm. uh okay you know let's head back to where we stopped yes. kind of document how things are going uh and this has been a great start i really want to thank you for making it here i'm <laughs> actually i i'm going to cut you short but i'm actually so glad that i did this uh, and i think um I mean there are a lot of interviews that you give right but even to be able to speak and to be able to share stuff you need to feel comfortable yeah. and you need to have that vibe so i think you and your team are doing a great job and uh, and i'm glad you're getting stories out there for people to know i'm glad that's the whole idea and there's so much like you know when you look at a story on social media there's only so much you get out of it and then you do a deep dive and you're like man this is this is not as easy and then suddenly it humbles you yeah. because you realize what all has gone to make what you're seeing happen right yeah. so anyway thank you for being here this was navinita lod uh, there's a lot coming her way which we'll of course see in the coming episodes to come but i hope you enjoyed this one thank you so much for watching see you on the next one